Someone said it's the goal of every parent that, that, that it should be half as great as your five-year-old thinks you are and half as dumb as your 15-year-old thinks you are. <laughs> I can believe that. I've been on both sides of that one, I think. Mark Twain said, when a kid turns 13, stick him in a barrel, nail the lid on top of it, and feed him through the knot hole. <laughs> when he turns 16, plug up the knot hole. <laughs> Boy, it sometimes can be tough. We've been down those roads, haven't we? But I love dear Billy Graham. He said these words about children. Children will invariably talk, eat, walk, think, respond, and act like their parents. They give them a target to shoot at. Give them a goal to work toward. Give them a pattern that they can see clearly, and you will give them something that gold and silver cannot buy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Paul says these words in Ephesians chapter one, verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Boy, we can see that as the Christian walk, but also in the family as followers of Christ. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Uh, I want to tell you something first and foremost today. Live, living a worthy life is difficult, but it is possible. We feel so unworthy at times, but I'm so thankful that God has allowed me to be the parent that he has allowed me to be. But though I feel so unworthy to be the parents of the two children that he gave me. The Bible tells us that children are reward from God. Uh, but then he also tells us later in, in the Psalms that uh, gray hair is a crown. And I'm thinking that the one comes after the other. And I'm wondering if one's not a result of the other. You know, have you ever felt that way? Uh, but, but I'm so thankful that God allows me uh, to be the parents of Trey and Kelsey. Now, Kelsey's our 25-year-old daughter. She's the mother of our granddaughter, Stella. Trey is our 16-year-old son. He's going to be 17 in February, but he's probably just as much of a man of God as anybody I've ever met. And I'm thankful that I'm being able to see that walk, and I wish I could take more credit for that walk, but it all comes from Jesus and his willingness to be in his word every day. You know, that's the amazing thing about God is he will work in your life when you allow him to do that. And, and though we don't feel worthy to let Jesus be such an active part of our life, he still chooses to be a part of our life. And so it is an opportunity to live a worthy life. We're called to be Christians, first and foremost. We're called to trust Jesus. And 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 says, Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. Well, what is your calling? First of all, you're going to be following Christ. You're going to be a person who's going to honor God with your life. You're going to trust him as your Lord and Savior. But then on that, it covers every aspect of your life. So, well, if you're a mother or your father, if you're a fellow believer in Jesus, or if you're a neighbor down the street, whatever the case is, just make sure you're that person that God has called you to be. So Peter's speaking to all Christians. Uh, and and, uh, and when, when, when that calling comes, with that calling comes a responsibility, especially when we're parents. God has given us some of his most dear and choice blessings in the children that he loves. And, and, and everyone in the family is honored when when someone does well. And so why not do all we can to make sure that they succeed in life? I, it's nothing more promising in life than when you look over and you see a child that you have maturing and growing. And you say, boy, they're really picking up on this thing or they're really doing that good. You know, uh, as I've said before, it, when we far, start seeing them start to walk and when we first see them start walking, you know, they want to the toddle. And I saw uh, a video yesterday of, of little Madeline walking. And she's walking behind her little walker, and, and as she's going along, she's going along, she wants to walk so bad, Mom said, and then she just falls. But you know what the thing about it is you're going to get back up and go. And maybe it wasn't even a time where Mom was even expecting to see her begin to walk. It just happens, you know? And, and then we celebrate those kind of things. And God wants us to say, have some great successes, celebrate the great things, encourage them to be everything that they can be in life. You know, when Trey makes a great golf shot on the golf course, I always rub it in and say, well, I could have done better. Or maybe he takes on another song in the church because somebody's encouraged him to, to do that. And I said, boy, that's my boy. You know? <laughs> Somebody asked me, said, where did he get his singing ability? Did he get his singing ability from you? I said, yeah, I gave him, I gave him every bit of mine. 
He sure did, because I didn't keep none of it. You know, I may not be as gifted in the area my, my children are sometimes, but one thing that I can do is encourage them and cheer them on to do whatever it is that they endeavor to do as long as it honors God. And I pray you'll do the same thing. You see, we're all called to be like God. Philippians chapter 2 urges us to have the same attitude as Jesus. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, it tells us, but just as you were called, he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. That's a big challenge for a person to try to be in front of their children. Jesus in the gospel told us that his followers are to be salt and light and yeast. Those things are going to be different. They're going to bring something different to what they're being added to. Uh, th there's no mistake in the flavor of salt. Hmm? All those things I mentioned during uh, my little meditation thought earlier about the turkey and the dressing and the gravy and the Boy, if we'd leave the salt out of that, <laughs> you know, what my granddaddy used to say when his blood pressure got high and they put him on, you remember the no salt? You know what he said? He said, don't just write on there, no flavor, and call it what it really is. <laughs> you know, it's just something different, isn't it? It's going to add something. And so we're called to be something different, make a difference in the lives of those God has allowed us to be a part of. Uh, we're called to be worthy of his name. And today you did just that when you stood in front of all of these people that are here today and said, we want to dedicate our child or our children to grow to know and serve the Lord. There's going to be something different. There's going to be something different in me. There's going to be something different in them. And as a result of that, there's going to be just something different in the people around us. And so I applaud you because you take the courage to do that and stand up. It takes wisdom. Uh, wisdom to know that they're going to need more sometimes than we can give them on their own. And God has blessed you with a church family who will help give you the tools to see to it that that will happen. So that's what it means to live a life worthy of the calling that we have received. There, there's three characteristics we need to have, Paul would say in that passage of Scripture. In verses 2 and 3, he says, first of all, we need humility. It's very humbling to raise children, isn't it? We thought we were on top of the world. We knew everything until that first little fellow showed up. You're like, I don't know nothing. And you, you, you remember uh, having to call when your, your first child shows up, and you, had to, you, you were growing. My daddy ain't going to tell me nothing. Mama don't need to say, I know how to live. And that first time that one cries, and it won't stop crying, and you go, Mama, you got to bring it to them. I, I got to call. Have you ever? You, you, it's humbling, isn't it? Let me say it's humbling as a minister, to, as a church, and as a church family that you would trust us here at New Testament Christian Church to love and support each of you as, you, as we seek to know Jesus better. And we're not going to take it lightly, and I hope you don't. It's not just another thing that you've done in the stage of your child's life. Well, we've dedicated our child, but it's a lifelong process until they come to that knowledge of Christ themselves. When we consider all the blessings that God has given us, we can be thankful that our children are on top of that list. Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, Be, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. He wants us to think about the other person more than we think about ourselves. My wife, uh, who was up here just a few minutes ago, I told somebody the other day, I said, uh, she, they, somebody said, she is the most kind and generous person I ever met. I said, yep, she'd give you the shirt right off my back. <laughs> uh, she would. I mean, she's like, you got one, go over there and do so-and-so. But I'm thankful for that because it's something that she's modeled in front of our children. And, and it's, it's humbling to see that. And Paul wants us to think about other people more than ourselves. That's, that's exactly what Jesus did when he came to earth and he, he went to the cross. He, he thought about us. He humbled himself, the Bible said. He became and take on the very nature of a man. Why? Because he wanted to show us the way to get to heaven. When you stood up here today, you're selling your children, regardless if they're uh, four or five months old, or if they're eight, eight years old, whatever the case is, I want to show you how to get to heaven. Very humbling. He says we're to be gentle. 
You know, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, it says, So in everything you do, do it as uh, <clears throat> do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. I, I wish I had opportunity growing up to grow up in the church. I didn't. I came later in life. Uh, maybe the kids sometimes take it for granted that they get to come to church every Sunday. I'm sure you as parents or grandparents at times have to go to church. And, and there's maybe even you, in your own life growing up, if you grew up in church, there might have been some Sundays you, 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 you had to get ready to go, oh, I got to go to church. Go. We go every week. It's not like, you know, I go to school every day. Don't I worry have to, have to go anymore. And now I can't wait to be here. And, and I know I'm the preacher, and maybe you say, well, you're supposed to say that you're the preacher. But I can't wait to be here. And, and I wish I had known more about that. I, I, I wish I had earlier in my daughter's life, though she, even as a four-year-old, she, we came into the church. I wish I had started her earlier. Because that's what I would have loved somebody to have done for me. And, and hopefully what they're going to do, your children are, they're going to later on in turn, you're going to be sitting there as the grandparent. You're going to you're gonna be the Carla sitting there looking at your grandchild uh, growing up and, and knowing the Lord. And I remember dedicating my child. Now they're dedicating their child. And I would hope along your life's journey, some, someone has taken that time to, to, to put in the effort to see that you were presented the opportunity to receive the greatest gift that's ever been offered. That's salvation. That is something you can't, you're not going to buy that. It's going to be presented to you as a gift, but you've got to receive it. Just like these gifts today, we, we, we've got them sitting all over, hundreds of them. And, and, and this box is going to be there, and one day somebody's, and very soon is going to hand it to a little child and say, here you go, and they're going to go, no, I don't want that. You, it's yours, it's free, there's no strings attached. And they go, I don't want that. So what are you going to do? You either leave it with them or you give it to somebody else. You see, it's a gift. You can't force it on them. They have to choose to take it. They could walk away empty-handed. All we can do is continue to present the, the free gift of salvation, as Jesus would have us to do. And hopefully one day they make the choice as we model our need for Jesus in our life that it says, because mommy or daddy sees it so important and it's real in their life i need that as well i pray that we keep that in mind you know <clears throat> my family went out to eat well they go out to eat a lot it seems like we just had this conversation we went out to eat the other night guess who paid weren't trey he would if i'd asked him he squirrels his money away He'll say, can I get this? He'll look at something on the menu. He knows a little bit more than what we normally get. He says, can I get so-and-so? And I'm like, mm, yeah, go ahead. I mean, why would I do that? I mean, you know, because I know I'm financially a little bit stronger than the kids are, just a little bit stronger, not a whole lot. But I expect to be the one who takes care of them and pay the bill. When there's something heavy to lift or to move around the house, for, for, for a long time, it was always me. Uh, poor Trey, he's getting bigger now and stronger, and, uh, you know, I'm like, well, it's about that time you start. I think you can pick that up. <laughs> you go with it. But it's just a, a matter of a responsibility, isn't it, that sometimes we, we begin to take those stages of life. And so it is with matters of responsibility to point our kids to Jesus. Those of us who are more mature should look out for those who are not as mature and help them understand why they need a relationship with Christ. And then Paul says to just be, be patient. That's one thing that we sometimes as parents run out of, isn't it? Why won't this baby stop crying? Why was my kid throwing a tantrum? You know, we took Stella this, this past week for a checkup, her annual checkup, and she's two and a half. And so when Dr. Shade, who is her pediatrician, who was her mommy's pediatrician growing up, and Trey's pediatrician, she walks in, and she says, oh, how's Stella doing? And, and, and she says, well, now, at this age, you know, they'll be doing this, and they think they're as, you know, they're as big as you are, and they, they, they are going to try to make decisions like you, you are, and, you know, uh, and, and they get frustrated when they don't accomplish things. They'll want to try to tie their own shoe or whatever, and it won't work, and they'll get mad, and they'll have a meltdown, and they'll be, but it will pass, you know. I'm like, well, I still do that. 
But they're explaining to us, you know, she said, well, just be patient. It will pass. And, and I wonder sometimes if we understand that we do have the power to show restraint uh, when, when things don't always go right and model Jesus for them. What I found out in raising children, and I hope you do, is that as we would learn from this passage in verse 3, anything worthwhile is going to take effort. Have you figured that one out? Anything worthwhile is going to take some effort. Paul tells us to make every effort. He didn't say, well, if you get opportunity. He says, you make every effort. He talks about here keeping the unity of the Spirit. Now, that word Spirit is capitalized, so we know he's talking about the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? That keeping unity of the Spirit means I've got to have him living in me, so as a result, I can let it come out and let him be living in other people. I can be demonstrated. How does that happen? I have to trust him as my Savior first and say, I need Jesus in my life. And as Christians, the Holy Spirit comes and he lives inside of each and every one of us. Uh, that is a miraculous thing that takes place because God says, I want to be with you. And so Paul refers to the unity of the Spirit that we can have with one another here. Now, one resource that we should be thankful that God has provided us with and, and to help us with that is the local church. In, in this past Sunday night, our elders unanimously confirmed the mission statement for New Testament Christian Church. I love it. You know, because they know what they're all about. They know where they want to go and they know what they want to achieve. Here it is in simple words. Win the lost, grow believers, and impact the world. That gives us something to shoot for, doesn't it? We don't just start and quit. We have to keep growing. So it is with raising children. If we want unity in our families, we have to desire to see them prosper and excel in everything that they do. But also we must be committed to the Lord and his plan for us so that we know we're walking and keeping unity of the Spirit. Because it's going to take a little work. And so today, parents, I, I'm thankful you've chosen to do just that because you know that your families are worth it. And Paul is telling us to live our lives on God's standards, not our standards. You know, it may mean sometimes turning off the TV and just saying, let's just talk. Let's just spend some time together. You know, my granddaughter, she loves to watch little videos on YouTube, these little kids her age opening blind bags. I didn't ever know such things. You know what blind bags were when I was a kid, maybe when you were a kid? You went to the store, and you, if you had a nickel or a dime or whatever, that's what they were back when, my, when I was a kid, and you got ready to leave the roads or, or brindles or somewhere like that. They, some of them places are gone now, aren't they? But you remember by the doorway, if you couldn't buy a big, big thing because you didn't have any money, maybe you had a coin, and you could put it in that machine out there, turn it like the big gumball machine. It had a little plastic ball in there. You popped the lid off, and it had this card on there, and it would say what types of trinkets would be in those little prizes. And so you thought, well, I want that. And so you said, well, and, and he'd come up front, wouldn't he? Now, there's no guarantee you're going to get that. But we said, no, I want that. And you said, hard on it. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and guess what? It hardly ever panned out that you got exactly what you were looking for. And we've asked for another quarter. But look, we're not dealing with blind bags. We know what we've got with our children. We know what God has given us as opportunity, and, and we just need to say, I'm going to today choose to follow God. I'm making a choice, conscious effort, that I know this is what my family needs, this is what I need, and I don't have to worry about ripping the top off and say, well, I sure hope this is going to work. I know it works. God has stayed faithful. The Bible tells us he's been the same from the very beginning. Yesterday, today. And forever. And since our God doesn't change, I know that his plan never changes. And we see that today to demonstrate that you're willing to set apart your family, to make a commitment to your children, that Jesus comes before anything else. I pray today that's what you've chosen to do. To do that, you have to make sure that you set them apart for yourself. You know what's going to happen, though we said today we've, we brought our children, and we stood there. We had our arms around them. We said we loved them. On the day of judgment, we're not going to be able to point at anybody else and say it's their fault that we didn't do this or we didn't get a chance to do that. 
God said, I'm going to hold each person accountable. Now, as a parent, I take my child, I present them to the Lord. I give them to him every day. I still do it. I dedicate my children to God every day in my prayers. God, they're out of my sight. I don't know what they're doing, but you do. I don't know what they're going to be facing, but you do. I don't know what they're going to encounter. I don't know what choices they're going to have to make and be confronted with, but you do. Help them make the right one. Put your hand of protection over them. Let them know how much you love them. And above everything else, God, let them trust you.